There will be some people with us here today, tuning in to this, who grew up in an age when it was quite normal to go to church. Uh, when parents saw value in sending their children to Sunday school and organisations within the church. Today though, the landscape is quite different. Things have changed and moved dramatically. There's no longer that social pressure uh, that people once felt to go to church. There are many opportunities now to do things other than go to church with your leisure time. And in some respects, it's become very fashionable um, to become a, to be a sceptic or describe yourself as a sceptic. The new atheists, as they're sometimes called, are um, today almost evangelical in their campaign against religious things or things of faith and of the Christian faith in particular. Yet while all of this is true, there are still many people who describe themselves as spiritual. Although that spirituality is often um, vague or misdirected or misguided in some form. So then, some res in some respects, faith is no less common than it has always been. And some think that while, this, while some people say that there is a decline in religion, that it is simply a falling away of people who were nominal in, the member in their membership of the church. And through the removal of that social pressure, they no longer feel that they've got to be involved in a church somewhere. But then on the other hand, did we really ever think that everybody saw Jesus with misty eyes? Or that in the last half century, um, only that atheists and sceptics emerged? No, it's in this context that the church has always existed. Church has always been there at that point. And while in some places and at some times the church may have been kind of a norm of the state, that the two went together, the church and the state, true faith could never be imposed. Hearts always had to be won. Now, this current crisis has almost forced us to take time out and look again at what is central to the and foundational to the church. And that's what we've been trying to do over the last number of weeks. Whether that is to our benefit in the long run has yet to be proved, it's yet to be seen. A number of weeks ago I asked the question, what activities could we lose, could we remove without making the church no longer the church? And the things that over these last weeks we have looked at, I'm convinced are foundational. They're the things that we cannot afford to lose and remain the church. I don't want to go them over them all again in detail, but nonetheless, it's important for us to remind ourselves that there were four things that have emerged um, as crucial, as central, as foundational. And the first is our identity in Christ. Then our identity together as the church. Then our charge to be witnesses. We looked at that, you remember, as well. And then last week, we looked at the life and activities of the early church in Jerusalem. And we discovered then that the same four things that were central to the church then are central to the church today. Bible teaching, fellowship, prayer, communion. These are the things that are still central to the church. Because their faith was living and vibrant, it was expressed in three ways. It was expressed, first of all, upwardly in praise to God as they fed on the word, as they praised God together. Then was it, it was expressed inwardly as they shared in fellowship together, one with the other. And then outwardly as they gained that favourable impression in the community around them. The impression that their faith and their life together made on others. Now what drew me to this passage in Colossians was Paul's concern that the church should press on to maturity. And that seemed an appropriate way to end for me after these now five weeks. But to my surprise, and wrongly of course, and I should have known this, I found that this actually summarised more and more of my thoughts and gave form to what I've been thinking about in my own thoughts and in my mind. That the church is the place in which we should be prepared to live our life and our faith day by day 
in what you might say is the real world. So the church is the place where all this preparation, where all this practice, where all of that preparation takes place. And that, after all, was Paul's concern, that Christ should be presented to the world. It's his concern, but it's also his concern that the church should be brought on to maturity so that they, too, could present Christ to the world. Now, as sometimes happens, things take a, a, a different turn when God takes a hand. And I was looking in the bookshelves the other day for a book and my eye fell on a book that I'd read, I don't know, must have been five years ago. Um, and I, as you do, as I do anyway, I picked it out and I began to look at it. And it was underlined and highlighted here, there and everywhere. Now, I apologise for reading uh, this to you today, but I hope that why, we, why this is important will become clear uh, later on as we come to sum up. This book called Everyday Church uh, was, has two authors. Um, you'll see there Tim Chester and Steve Timmis. Uh, and my eye, when I was looking at this, came upon this passage, which I think is, is central to what we've been thinking about. Let me read it. In the past, many people attended church, sometimes by legal constraint, but more often by social constraint. In this context, churches could legitimately speak of faithfully pro proclaiming the gospel because each Sunday they had gospel-centred sermons. This is no longer the case. We cannot claim to be faithfully proclaiming the gospel to the lost through our Sunday preaching when most of the lost do not attend church in the first place. We need to do our mission outside the church and outside church events. Now that sums it up. I think that earths this passage that we will look at now in the reality of today. Today when most people don't come near church either for their social activity or their Sunday worship. For now though, let's remind ourselves of this wonderful message that we have as we sing together. Thank you for the cross, Lord. See you in a moment.